I'm going to wait for the little cubs right in front of us to move a little bit further away before I, I move the car. Don't want to give them a fright. This little guy here, he did it the last time I saw him as well. He's a wheel watcher. So as the wheel goes round and round, certain lion cubs seem to be more fascinated than others. And you can see he's just watching the wheels. <laughs> okay, let's go around. Back on the move. Heading back towards where we saw Herbie with a single lioness. Station is Ngala, uh, mobile north again, uh, back towards Mamba. As you can see the large torchwood tree um, to, to the south of Mamba, they're heading straight towards that torchwood. Okay, isn't this wonderful Saturday cat day living up to uh, what is it we come to expect from Saturdays in the bush. Okay. Uh, so Gregory, you are correct. I started telling a sad story about the last time the Sticks Pride brought cubs onto Juma. Uh, it was when was it about June, June or July last year? They had three little cubs, and what happened was that the Birmingham boys were busy taking over from uh, the Matimba males, and uh, they killed those cubs. Of course, there's more, more than likely that these cubs are fathered by Birmingham's. So they're safe. The biggest threat to these cubs about being in this area is actually the Inkahuma females. Well, all three lionesses are here now. Paige in Tennessee was wondering whether the Inkahumas would be a threat to the sticks. They would, uh, as much as male lions fight with other male lions, and even though the Birmingham's are dominant over both the prides, uh, female lions will defend their territory against other female lions. And I think they're probably going to set settle in this area for the day. There you go. Quick drink. Wonderful for this sunset safari. There are going to be lions all about, males and females and babies. Oh, oh this is going to get fun. I start arguing over who gets to suckle where. See how their ears go flat when they're feeding, just as if they were feasting on an, an anyala or a kudu. Now, these girls are very hungry. I think they're definitely going to hunt again on the sunset safari. How's it, Ava? Go. Oh, thirsty little guys. Now, as I said, the females look quite hungry, and we did see one chasing an Anyara earlier. Oh. 
There we go. Others are moving up from where the other lioness is sleeping in the shade. Are they going to join the, the feast battle or are they just going to come lie about? Oh, I think there could be an attempt to, to get inside that scrum. There we go. <laughs> Brenda is saying it seems like the sticks line this is a more mobile the warmer part of the day or is it just perception I think it's perception it just happens to be when we find them towards the end of drive and they are mobile but as I said I think they're gonna go flat cat for now uh, unless something happens to stumble into them during the day. <laughs> She's starting to snarl. <laughs> Lots of sharp little needle-like teeth attached to her belly. One, two, Three, four, five, six. <laughs> and one just looking for a hug. There we go. Got it. You got it. Got its hug. wondering why all the cubs are going and trying to feed or play with the one female. Um, aren't the others who have uh, cubs also lactating? Well, that is true, Dory. Lions do practice aloe suckling, so they will suckle another pride member's cubs. But I think in this case, it's, it's uh, uh, my cousin or my brother is there, so that must be the one I want. So, competition. And, of course, that will carry on when they get older into to feeding at the, at the kills as well. And all these little growls and snarls we're hearing from the cubs um, are going to become deeper and more meaningful uh, when they are feeding off the carcass and they're a bit older. One thing we can't say about lions is they, they don't have any personal space boundaries. forward a little bit so the other vehicle behind us can also move forward and get a, a nice view. Of, tired of it. She does have that sort of disgruntled mother look about her at the moment. Like, oh, these children. Oh. I think possibly the way the directors feel about the presenters from time to time. But of course, uh, us presenters are as petulant as the lion cubs. <laughs> So we don't even notice when they give us those looks. Now Geraldine's just taking it too far, now she's just being rude. She says we look scratchy and itchy like the lion cubs as well. I think we're going to have to organise a, a non-venomous snake in Geraldine's bed at some point this summer. It's 
It's definitely been a lion day today. Started off with that beautiful big male lion walking through the golden sunrise. And what a way to end off with lions. And <laughs> noisy, a little bit mangy, but definitely full of character and the sticks and cubs. So you could almost, if you had to draw a comparison, you could almost say that the, the Inkahuma cubs are, are, are the sort of picture-perfect postcard lion cubs from the, you know, from the right side of the tracks. <laughs> the sticks cubs look like they might be from the wrong side of the tracks. Now, I'm pretty sure what's happened with this, uh, it could be a form of mange, it's, uh, it might just be a, a fungal infection, but they've definitely picked it up from the Birmingham boys. And the Birmingham boys have spent a lot more time with the Styx Cubs than they have with the Inkahuma Cubs. Now, hopefully, the Birmingham boys are beyond their, their manginess and they don't spread it to our postcard lion cubs. So the, I noticed that the, the, fe the Styx females also have it along their belly. And as I said, from the Birmingham boys, and I think that's passed on to the cubs. But apart from just looking a little bit scruffy, they, they seem to be in good condition and playful and noisy. And there's no obvious signs that they are very, very ill. I think it's just more of an irritation. <laughs> My, mom's, mom's in that padded. Enough of this nonsense. <laughs> Don't even let go when mom stands up. Now, Kieran's wondering, is this the group of cubs um, where the one's got a sore leg? No, it's not. This is a different pride, Kieran. This is the sticks pride. And the one with the sore leg is in the Inkahuma pride. So the females don't want to, to suckle because they, they're very hungry. So there might not be that much milk there. She moved closer to us. Isn't this incredible? <laughs> Can you hear that deeper growl from the lioness? I'm just going to keep really quiet so you can hear these incredible sounds.
sometimes it's much better than to talk. Just let the animals do the talking for you. Hashtag Safari Live on Twitter or pop me an email questions at wildearth.tv. But for now, I'm going to let the lions do the talking for me. they're all able to feed there's not enough not enough teats some of them are just lying there and irritating their siblings or cousins um, the deep growling those are the ones feeding and as soon as another one tries to push in like that's happening right now it's trying to force the hand can't get its head in There we go, we got a couple just sleeping off to the side there. Oof, sounds like it's heating up at the kill again. Or well, when I say the kill, I'm heating up at mom's mom's tummy. Spectacular. So Tobias is wondering, is it possible that the mother of the older cubs has stopped lactating? Um, and that's why they've all gone to this lioness. Uh, probably not. Uh, she probably still she is definitely still lactating. They might have been feeding off her earlier. Oh, there we go, getting stuck in again. They might have been feeding off her earlier. Which is, uh, and she might have run out of milk, so that's might maybe why they're feeding on the other lioness. Well, you know, mom taking the opportunity to give one a good cleaning. Look at the other one, it's fast asleep. I know he's getting stuck in now. Lionesses have uh, the most motherly patience to deal with a scrum of little ones all feeding at the same time. <laughs> oh, 